You know, I wanted to, to bring up the fact that we talked about the Sabbath being a sign, but the scripture back in those times, the, uh, well, history tells us that a sign or a seal was really a pledge. Mm-hmm. Like when a king would take a, uh, maybe take another lesser nation mm-hmm. and he made a pledge with them, mm-hmm. he would seal it and it would be a sign to them that they could rest in the fact that he was going to take care of them, be, mm-hmm. you know, provide for them, you know, whatever it, the needs are for that particular nation. Mm-hmm. So how is Sabbath connected to being a seal or a guarantee like a seal of a king? Uh, well, the way I see that in, in terms of it being a seal of the covenant between God and Israel is that as long as Israel kept the Shabbat, God was basically obligated to keep his part of the covenant. And, uh, you know, when you read about the disciplines of the Lord in Leviticus and then again in Deuteronomy 28, uh, the blessings and cursings passages in those two books, uh, God never did say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discipline you and absolutely cast you aside and you will no longer be my people. He was saying, I'm going to discipline you until you turn back to me and turn away from the paganism into which you fall and you turn back to me. Mm-hmm. His discipline was not to disinherit. His discipline was to restore so when, when we talk about the Shabbat being a seal of that covenant, uh, God was saying to the children of Israel, keep my Sabbaths, and I will, I will make good the promises I've made to you without having to discipline you because of your disobedience. He promised to make them a nation. Yeah. He promised to give them the, the land. The land. And he promised to, that they would affect the nations by being a light to the nations, and Messiah would That's come right. from the very biological seed Absolutely. Of, of the and Jewish all people. all of that would happen. And even though the people went through many up and down cycles of being near to God, far away from God, uh, ultimately, the northern tribes apostatizing because of uh, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and all of that. God still preserved a candle. He still preserved a holy remnant. He said, I will him. keep one tribe for the sake That's of David right, of David, and for the sake of Jerusalem. Of Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem is where he's coming back to. And Jerusalem happened to be in this kingdom of Judah. Yeah. So for Jerusalem's Actually, sake, yeah, it but it was Benjamin. in the southern but kingdom Benjamin of Judah. In, yeah, but in, yeah. And Benjamin was swallowed up in, in Judah. Judah, so technically it's in Well, it places. wasn't in the northern kingdom, it was oh, in the no, southern no, no, kingdom no. called Judah. Ki- yes. king, southern, uh, kingdom. And, it, and of course Benjamin was, 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 Benjamin was preserved too preserved as by, 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 being, by Judah. Mm-hmm. And isn't it interesting that it was part of Leah's family, part of Rachel's mm-hmm. family that was preserved in that holy seed. So even though the northern ten tribes were dispersed... And are to this day, apparently. Uh-huh, but they're being restored. Uh, but uh, the youngest son of Rachel was taken under the wing of mm-hmm. Judah, who offered himself to Joseph in the stead of Benjamin, said, make me a slave, my father won't be able to live if you mm-hmm. take his little boy. Mm-hmm. And so Judah, put him under his wing. Judah loved Benjamin, and we see later uh, Benjamin, the tribe, mm-hmm. is under the wing of Judah. So you're basically right when Jerusalem is both in Benjamin and also under the wing of Judah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the whole point is that that uh, God was saying to the Israelites, I'm giving this, this seal of this covenant to you, and if you simply walk in this Shabbat, uh, you're going to basically make the way for me to do what I already want to do. I already want to bless you. I already want to give you all mm-hmm. these promises. I already want to enact all these. And now by your obedience to me, you're enabling me to do what I want to do is what he's really saying. Now let's put on the prophetic lens. Okay. Okay. So um, it, not only is it a sign and a, a pledge yeah. of God to his people, but it also pointed to Messiah, mm-hmm. the Shabbat. Mm-hmm. And don't we have all provision comes from our relationship and our covenant through Messiah? Yes. What I understand about Shabbat is, okay, whenever I were to ask you, uh, how are you in, in Hebrew, mm-hmm. I would say, um, Mashlom Cha. Okay. And, and you would say Beseder. Beseder. Everything's in order. Okay, so I'm asking you not just how are you doing. Mm-hmm. The translation is, how is your peace? How's your peace? How's your well-being? What state of well-being? Mashlom ha. Mashlom ha. There is the shlom, your shalom. How mm-hmm. is your peace? And so what I'm asking you to do when I say mashlom ha to you, I'm asking you to do an inventory of mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah. I'm asking you to, to think through, is there anywhere, any place in me where I have angst, mm-hmm. where my peace is lacking? Where, where I'm unsettled. Where I'm unsettled. I'm not sitting. 
And and basically, yeah, you're not sitting, you're not, not resting. Rest. I'm not in a state of rest on a throne of life. And so, and when you say beseder, you would say everything's in order. In order. Yeah. I love I love the Hebrew oh, uh, words that really you know give us a sense of not just going th- going through the, the motions of saying how are you and oh, it's just great. rhetorical yeah, right. you know I really don't want you to tell me about your upset stomach right right right, right. but <laughs> you know it, but in Hebrew it's more than physical it's taking inventory of your your soul taking inventory of how you're feeling in your in your mind and mm-hmm. your heart and so what this is all about is is basically. Are, do you have Messiah in you? You know, when I yeah. say Mashalmcha, is Messiah okay in you? Are you, are you feeling him? He's Sar Shalom. He is. Sar Shalom. He is Sar Shalom. So is he in you? Is he working in you? Do, mm. do you feel the peace yes. of Messiah is in you? Is he abiding you? in me? This, yes. this whole idea of Jesus said, "If you abide in me and I abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done for you." And John. This whole idea of abiding is Shabbat. It's yeah. ongoing Shabbat. It's, it's ongoing. It's a rest in each other. But, you know, I, I really want, you know, just because I'm a counselor to a lot of different Christians who have come and talked to me, sure. I know a lot of Christians are walking around in angst and they're, yeah. they're, they don't have peace. They're have, mm-hmm. They have difficult things going on in their life. Then again, I see other believers, Christians, who have difficult things going in their life, but, they're ha- but they have peace about it. In the midst of it. So the difference is, is the peace... Mm-hmm. You know, that passes the understanding. Mm-hmm. Our understanding should be, I should be falling apart right now, but for some reason I feel okay about this. Mm-hmm. That's the lower level of me. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but, but what we're asking, though, is Messiah, is, is He prevalent? Is He operating in yeah. your life? Yeah. And even though things are, are falling apart, I don't need to know about what's falling apart. I don't need to know all the things, all the things that are going bad in your life. Mm-hmm. I need to know, if, are you at peace? Well, that's very good. Okay. What is, is, what is your inner state? What's your inner state? Where are you on, at the Can I pray for you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's really an, another question that you're asking. Mm-hmm. If things are not in order, can I minister can to you? I minister help, to you? Help. Can I help you in well, some I like way? That. That's very good. That's very practical. Can I bow down? You know, blessing someone is to bow down. Did you know that? I mean, mm-hmm. because... It's to kneel. It's to kneel. So mm-hmm. Baruch is to kneel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Baruch is to bless. And so if I, if I want to bless someone, I'm basically, you know... <laughs> Bowing down at their feet, saying, "What can I do to bless you? What can what I Jesus do?" What Jesus did when He washed feet. That's exactly what He did. He became a servant. Yeah. So, beautiful. so our our Shabbat would be our peace within. Yeah. Our, do you have that peace within? Mm-hmm. And you know, it's not so much by going through the motions because going through the motions sometimes can become a burden. Didn't that, it become a burden? Yeah. That's that's really part of what I was kind of wanting to address in the earlier segment. I but, had to make some foundational issues first. Yeah, that, but that's, oh, no, no, no. But <laughs> you I had to deal I, with some of that. You know, the issue of Sabbath is such a hot-button issue theologically mm-hmm. for so many people that it's important to me. Mm-hmm. I'm not speaking for you. I'm speaking for Brian. To make sure that people understand that, that people who are in Messiah, in Jesus, have actually, legally, we have actually died. Mm-hmm. When you get baptized in water, you have died. And it is no longer you that lives, but Christ who lives in you, which is what you were just talking right. about. And Paul in 1 Corinthians 7 makes the point that if I have died to that old man, then everything about his rule over me is put away and I'm alive to my new husband. So that's the only point I'm trying mm-hmm. to make. I speak things that almost sound like it's anti-Sabbath. I am not anti-Sabbath. I am for putting it in its proper relation in my life and in your life. And, and I think that what I, what I tend to do is I, I, I tend to use shock value. And so sure, sure. I, I, I want to I want to put it out there and, and then rattle the cage. and rattle the cage a bit yeah. because I want to know how you Christians are doing in your peace. How are you doing in your Sabbath? How is that working for you? I like that. And okay. I'm going to tell you something. In the, four, in the days of my seeking, the 40 days that changed my life, I noticed after about three or four times, God did different things with me on the physical seventh day Shabbat than he did on any of the other days. And I thought, the Lord's doing something unique with me on this day. He must That's, like this. That Sabbath he is a, must like this. It's a visual aid. Yeah. It's a visual aid to a greater understanding. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's what you are experiencing. Yeah, and he's there. Uh, he has not abandoned his ways. Well, like I said, it is a rehearsal, you yeah. know. So God gave rehearsals that were on a weekly basis. Basically, you know, what I what I understand Sabbath to be is that, you know, we, we're to enter in. He wants us to enter in into the Spirit. He wants us to walk in the Spirit daily. Sure, you know, you talked about course. Paul. Paul yeah. says we have to die to ourselves daily. Definitely. You know, we yes, we died in Christ, but for some reason we pick everything back <laughs> up again when the guy cuts us off on the interstate and yeah. all of a sudden we're back in the flesh. And I it happens it all like day else. long. All the time. And so, you know, can we 
can we walk in the flesh 100% of the time? No, not until Jesus comes. I don't think. Being in the spirit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can walk. Really we can walk. Yeah, 100. Yeah. Well, maybe not. Maybe not if you're a Christian, I don't think it's possible. Not, you should be no, the convicted. Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost doesn't like it, and I only want what He likes. Exactly. I am we, we'll get he miserable does. if I we're. Tell you, I'm uncomfortable if He even begins to be unhappy. I say, okay, what am I doing? Right. You know. Uh, yeah. Your life oh, becomes I'm miserable. Serious. So it's impossible for a Christian to be no. in the flesh 100 no. percent of the time. No. But it is possible for us to fall out of the spirit. Yeah. And we do it often throughout. Yeah. The day yeah. we just get involved in, in, in things of life. Yeah, we, we, you know, if people could only st- understand there are three, ne- three levels of a human being there's the spirit level, the soul level, and the body. And we oscillate many times between the operation of one of those three being dominant. Mm-hmm. The, real, the real secret of the Christian life is just to stay in the spirit. Mm-hmm. Jesus, the reason Jesus never sinned was he was always in the spirit. Mm-hmm. He only did what pleased the Father. Mm-hmm. He was totally, con- even though he was God, he, he submitted to being led by the Holy Spirit, right. not by being himself, being God operating as God. That's the whole thing about the kenosis in Philippians. But the real secret to the Christian life is allowing the Holy Spirit bless his sweetheart. Mm-hmm. He's the sweetest friend I have. Right. Yeah, but we... we letting him yeah. be the guide, letting him be the leader, and I just tell him, I want you to lead my life. That's it. But when we do fall out of the Spirit and, we we go and fall into the sure. flesh, then that's the grace that calls us back. Yeah. It's his voice saying, hey, come back. Yeah. He's always there welcoming us back. Yeah. And I hope that... When I do fall out of the spirit, I spend less time there, and I hope I don't. I, yeah, because and well, I get, he gets my attention. I oh, mean, yeah. you know, you can't stay there long without you know feeling the heat. <laughs> like I have got this conviction, or I've got you know mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. coals on the on top of my head, mm-hmm. and I've got I've got to do something different. And you know, we have to repent. We've got to come back and say, God, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I got into the flesh. It was a weak moment. And, you know, please help me not to go that direction go anymore. And, that's anymore. Yeah. Help me not to sin anymore. You know, you, you've done a wonderful teaching on the levels of repentance. And uh, they, there are about four or five of them. One of them is the intention to not do a thing again, mm-hmm. to change the pattern, to change the habit. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, a, if a person will just not have fluffy repentance, oh, God, I'm sorry I got mm-hmm. caught doing this and then emotionally go somewhere else. If they'll say, God, help me to break this out, break this habit out of me, get right. the, root this out of me, then they'll start living a truly liberated We need to life. be honest with ourselves yes, and say, do. I have got a weakness here or right wherever. Here. Yes. And God, I need for you to help me here. Yeah. You know this, but he is so faithful. Oh, he just yeah. wants us to to confess and and admit that this is a weakness in my life. God, I yeah. need your spirit. I can't do this on my own. Can't I can't. Myself. I can't get out of it. I can't make myself, you know, um, perfect. In you know, without you, you're the only only one that can perfect my faith and my walk. And so, but yeah, the, the, the Sabbath is a is a a visual aid for uh, the the children of Israel, and really. Um, it talks about the, the, the foreigner in the scripture well, yeah, that links itself this. to, to what Sabbath. What has distinguished the Jewish people for 4,000 years? Well, uh, it's their faith. It's their, it's it's their the way Sabbath. Of life, and, it? Yeah, it's their way of life. It's their halakha. They don't, they don't conform to the world. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't mean absolute, but I'm talking about truly observant Jews. They will observe the Shabbat even if they die for it. Mm-hmm. You know? So uh, to be among a pagan world and observing this Shabbat when everybody else is doing whatever, that sets you apart, that distinguishes you. It identifies you. It and identifies it, you. And, and I'm, I'm going to be honest here, it identifies you with the God of Israel. Uh, of course. Create spiritual wrath in some cases because the gods of this world don't like that God. Our culture is, is, isn't is based on the, um, I guess you would call it Israel's ways and laws, but we have an understanding of it. You know, I think we, we need to have a, a greater understanding. I think we're, mm-hmm. as Christians, we're, we're delving into our, our roots and mm-hmm. having a, a, a greater, more picturesque understanding, you know, mm-hmm. it's a, beginning to illuminate in us. And just as the word is illuminating for us, mm-hmm. I believe that God is also illuminating in the Jews a, a desire for Messiah. For so sure. yes. so we're both we've both been blinded. We're kind of gravitating toward each yeah, other we've both by, been blinded. By divine design. Exactly. But um yeah it, but the scripture talks about the the foreigner that also linked up. And you know we are 
we are grafted into the olive tree of Israel. Mm-hmm. We are grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. Yes, we are. We, you know, it's our it's our nation too. You know, the, Jesus is coming back and setting his throne right there in the midst of Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. One day we will be, you know, um, citizens, and I believe we are citizens of the Holy Zion right now. Paul, Paul said we're already seated we're already in heavenly places in Christ. In the so when that come when that when that city comes down and becomes one with the mm-hmm. physical city, we will be citizens of this of this nation and of the city. And so we, we are we have to understand that we have there, there is something about Sabbath that we need to connect to, that we need to know and we need to to, to be a part of. Now, is it the what what the Jews interpret it as? You know, there's so many fence laws that were created during the intertestamental time period mm-hmm. between the two testaments, the, the right. first and the second, right. that really became so it, it became burden. Yeah, yeah. Jesus called them commandments of men. And, and, and it, it was too hard for the people. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand the, the idea of a fence law, and that is to create a law that keeps you from breaking the true law. Right. Only thing is you can't call that fence law Torah. And you can't call it, you know, God's law. It's not. It's the law of parents. You know, That's true. what, what I, I've, all, I've pondered in, in the book of Proverbs, uh, that we're to honor the law of our father and the law of our mother. And so every family kind of has its own rules of how they're going to live life. Mm-hmm. And children learn the law of the mother, the law of the father. And it's a good law if it's based in the laws of God. Right. May, may be a modification. It's house, house laws. It's house laws. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of look on the uh, rabbinic traditions as house laws. It's, it's those fathers' best attempt to try to preserve the people. They were honest people. Mm-hmm. They were they were God loving people that wanted to love the Lord, but you know how things devolve as they they pass from generation mm-hmm. to generation. Uh, they get watered down. They become less than they were. Right. And so I, I look with a lot of grace and mercy on those traditions of the elders back then, because they were trying to follow God with everything in them. And just because they they stumbled over the Messiah, it was prophesied they would stumble. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was almost inevitable that a part of them would stumble because God broke off that part to graft in the Gentiles, mm-hmm. but God has promised to re to bring them, in, back. Yes. them back. So we Zachary understand 12. that yeah, God's purpose is far greater than anything that we can imagine ourselves. So I don't I don't have a whole lot of animosity toward Jewish tradition, except if it's if it's spiteful and mm-hmm. if it's bitter and if it produces meanness and not the graces of the spirit. Well, you can, you can, you can, I guess, uh, honor. Christian laws do that. Well, yeah, but you can honor the Sabbath by by not working and then still be evil. The Scripture <laughs> warns us of that. You're right. So you know, you, it's it's that's not the right spirit. That's not the right. The spirit, spirit of of Sabbath is 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 righteousness. It's justice. It's doing yes, good. It's, it's goodness. fruit. It's goodness. It's yeah. good fruit. Good fruit. And so you know. Jesus, he was he was um, accused of breaking the Sabbath many many times throughout the Scripture, Sabbath. but he never did. He broke and tradition. He says, "Isn't doing good? You know, isn't that part of, of the Sabbath? Sure. You know, doing good deeds, yeah. showing forth the goodness <laughs> of God. You Absolutely. know, so sometimes that might." be considered work if you're helping somebody you mm-hmm. know as little as crossing a street because the, they need help or mm-hmm. building a house because their house burned down in a fire mm-hmm. whatever it is you're helping and you're showing good deeds maybe mm-hmm. uh, working in a soup kitchen helping sure. the homeless or whatever yeah. dedicating yourself on that day on that sabbath to, oh, do, good, to do good to do what the spirit is calling you to Absolutely. do and not what the flesh is wanting to be ministered yeah. you know for you to do you know, you know, later in the scriptures, the, the scriptures would often make the distinction of ordinary work. Ordinary. Work. Mm-hmm. That didn't mean you couldn't do spiritual work. Mm-hmm. It was your ordinary what you do to serve yourself. So God's calling us to lay self down mm-hmm. and learn how to live for me. Exactly. Whenever whenever he says to, to separate the profane from the holy. From the holy. Basically, you know, those things that you do for yourself, don't do that. Don't do that. On this day, choose to, 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 to honor me. And practice this one day a week. Practice walking in the Spirit one day a week. And then, you know, on certain days throughout the year, practice again. And eventually, maybe on Monday, you can practice again. And on Tuesday, and make it a habit in your life to where you can do this every single day. You know, maybe one day you might be able to walk completely all week long. What does halakha mean? Halakha is how you walk. What, it's what how is, you live. Then what does Paul mean when he says halakha in the Spirit? What does he Walk say? in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. 
We need to do it all the time, mm-hmm. no matter. Let's just start doing it all the time. We'll start doing it all the time, but make a conscious, make effort, a conscious effort on on Sabbath, of course. because it says God will bless you if you bless the Sabbath. Yeah. And so you know, that's how, that's where you start. That's your starting place. That's your starting gate. That's one thing I love about you and Paul. You guys delight in the Sabbath. You know, the in, in Isaiah fifty eight is probably the most extensive text in the Bible on God saying what his intention is for the people of God in keeping the Sabbath. And he's saying, if you will observe my Sabbaths, then I will make you a light. He just goes on and on and on about what he will do if they will love his Shabbat. I think it gets people's attention. You know, we have our Sabbath, uh, our Arab Shabbat uh, time here where we have fellowship and, yeah. and teaching. And, and it gets people's attention. They're curious. They want to know. They want to enter in to whatever is going on mm-hmm. here. And, of course, mm-hmm. when they enter in and they, they, they get the teaching, we're telling them, you know, have this Sabbath all week long, you know. But it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity to, yeah. to open the door, yeah. shine the light, and then wel- welcome people in. But, you know, some people say, you know, well, we're supposed to have Sabbath every day. And I'll say, how you do? How's it working for you? How you doing with that? And, of course, they kind of many sheepish, sheepishly say, well, uh, yeah, well, it's not <laughs> not perfect. Well, you know, this is just one way. It's a practice. If you're going to have a play, a big, um, uh, you know, there's, you're, you're going to be in a big performance, you're going to need some practice times so mm-hmm. that you can you, so that you can operate perfectly on that mm-hmm. stage, right? Mm-hmm. So this is that time that we get together, and we just practice this, and we encourage one another. Mm-hmm. And when they walk away, we say, we'll say, still keep your Sabbath. Yeah. You know, but this is that time that we get together, and the Lord's presence is here. He promises sure. that His uh, that His presence will be here, sure. and so we we just decide to enter in, just like with all the other feasts. He promises to be there. There, are, those times are especially anointed mm-hmm. for His presence to do a special work, yeah. and so entering into the Sabbath on the Sabbath opens your heart up to receive the Sabbath, That's and then you can walk in it all week long. Sure. But you but you have to purpose to open the door and say, I'm coming in, you know? Mm-hmm. And so this is, Erev Shabbat is that door that, that you open up and you say, God, I'm here. I'm here to separate the week. All week long, I worked, you know, my tail off. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes I might have gotten this in the flesh and I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I repent of that. Mm-hmm. I'm here now because I know this is your time. This is the day of the Lord. You entered into rest on the seventh day. Mm-hmm. Now I'm entering into this seventh day rest with you. Mm-hmm. And take away from me the things that that polluted me throughout the week. And mm-hmm. and Lord, you take that that wonderful DNA of your creation and let my efforts continue to have a life. Yeah. Uh, may it may, may my work have a have a life that produces on through this day and then help me to walk in the next six days yes. by your spirit. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's Shabbat Shalom, rest in peace. It's let your flesh, let your carnality be put to death, be put to rest so that the spirit of God can operate through you and that he can operate in perfect, mm-hmm. the perfect mm-hmm. operating his ways through you, the halakha you're talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. And of course, that's his ways are all about his writings, his instructions. And so if it's done by the spirit and not by the flesh, then you're operating as he would require you to operate. And it's, it's, his, it's his spirit. It's not me. I don't have the ability to do it. I don't have the power. You know something that's very interesting to me? Studies have been done on nations in recent times attempting to get away from the every seventh day giving a working population rest. Mm-hmm. Uh, some communist countries tried 10-day cycles, working the workers nine days and giving them a tenth day off. Some have gone to shorter to and none of them have produced as well as the seventh day. They've all come back naturally, not without a command, not with a commandment from God, but purely on the basis of what works. They've all come back to given the seventh day, every seventh day, give the workers off and they will produce better. If I believe Isn't that amazing? it's the creator's design. It's the creator's and design. And so it's coming to him. It's getting that drink of water. It's mm. that thirsty. I've been out there working, even though I've been working yeah. as much as I can in the spirit. Yeah. I need this water. It's just I, amazing. I need that. I need your righteousness. I need for you to take away the things that I did wrong and replace that with what you know. I mm-hmm. what I see the weaknesses I had throughout mm-hmm. the week, yeah. and I need for you. I need your help. I find it interesting also that the biblical observant the, the observance of the biblical Sabbath 
begins at sundown. That means that for all practical purposes, because work is done during the what? Day. Daylight hours. Mm -hmm. God actually gave the people two nights in a day to rest for all practical purposes. And that's even more than <laughs> I think what most people get. Yeah. You know, in so the workaday uh, world. If you multiply seven days times two, day and night, mm -hmm. you have 14 halves of seven days. God gave us three fourteenths of a week for rest, actual rest. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. And it's, and it's wonderful to enter into the rest of God. Yeah, to let God's rest enter into us and us enter into Him. The amazing thing about that is, you know, whenever I'm talking to somebody that doesn't know the Lord and, and I'm wanting to lead them into the prayer to receive the Lord, what I tell them is, the first thing I say is, I want you to turn your mind toward God. Turn your mind toward God. Stop thinking mm -hmm. about anything else. Put that aside and turn and think. God, are you listening to me? Turn your mind toward Him. It's amazing what happens when you stop what you're doing and you simply turn your mind toward God. All of a sudden you find His presence was there all along. Right. You just weren't aware of it. And that's what happens on the Shabbat. We put away our ordinary and we turn our mind toward God. And it's like we open this great big door and here comes this download. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's doesn't, this, doesn't he say to, to cast down every imagination? And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge, knowledge of God. God. And yeah. so take those imaginations and just put those away. And cast like you said, and, and like you said, open your mind to God. Turn your mind toward God. And he beca he'll become your peace. He'll oh, become your rest. Oh, yeah. And he'll become your joy. And that's yes. what Sabbath is, is a joy. Yes. To enter in, in it in truth. You know, enter in spirit and in truth. Amen. And Absolutely. and not because you're obligated, no. because you got to get to. No, you get to. Don't have to. But I want to. to. I want to because you want to. Uh, I, because he's there. Because he's there. Right. I want to be there. That's right. And so I enter into Sabbath, whether it's on Sabbath or not. But for sure, that that rehearsal, I want to be there for rehearsal. Oh, I don't miss yeah. rehearsals. I've got to. I've got to be there. I found out that you know you know the story of the forty days that changed my life. The listener today might not know it. You can probably find that out on another one of our radio talks when I. But I give the detail of how God changed my life into uh, from my ordinary Christian life to the life more focused on uh, the Jewish people and God's purposes prophetically. Right. But in those 40 days where he changed my life, I discovered by experience that God likes his stuff. Mm -hmm. God really does. Well, that's like his standard, his isn't it? It's his standard is his ways. Yeah, he likes yes. his stuff. Mm -hmm. And if I love him, I like what he likes. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I have this, you've heard me say this little saying, how do you know when a, a woman falls in love with a man, she starts fixing him. Oh. <laughs> and, and how do you know when a man falls in love with a woman, he likes the way she fixes him. <laughs> so here's the way I feel about this. I like the way he fixes me. Yes. You know, I, so I'm going to come into agreement with him. I like the I way I think he the main thing me. we have to, to realize is we can't be dogmatic either way. I agree with In that. any direction. Yeah. And we just have to be open to the Spirit to, to minister to us and, and then respect where other people are at. Yeah, that's you know, they're, very they're good. Not, they're not always going to be at your level. You're that's not going to be at their good. level. They, you, they may be a lot further down the road yeah. than you or vice versa. And, you, and I, 10 yeah. years ago, I didn't know what I know today. Yeah. I can't condemn myself. Self for not knowing. That's right. You can't condemn yourself for being <laughs> for being not where you are right yeah, now. Yeah, we, we all are on this road of understanding sure. and discovery and yeah. and so as God opens us up and, and, and deposits more, do you think that you're at the point where you can't receive any more? Oh, I'm more hungry now <laughs> than I ever was. God it we all we I all know have so more much room. More. I know there's so much more. To receive more. Oh, and yeah. and what he's going to give us is is we can not even imagine. I'm gonna tell you what. His his Watch care over me. I'm just giving, giving a little personal thing here. It kind of blows me away because it's so detailed. He watches over me in detailed ways that I, I recognize. And, and he does it quietly. That amazes me almost mm -hmm. more than anything. He, he's not obtrusive with it. And I think about it and I think, how is it that you're this concerned for every detail mm -hmm. of my life? But he is. Yeah. So if he's that way with me, he has, he's no respecter of persons. He's that way with you, the person mm -hmm. listening to this, listening to Victoria and me talk about mm -hmm. this. Listen, we're just telling you what we've tasted and found that's really good. 
And so if you want to taste it and see that the Lord is good, just start tasting it. Mm -hmm. Put it to the test. And you know, Shabbat to, will, will be to you whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Yes. You know, it doesn't have to be like the other the, the person next to you or no. somebody else, another a Jewish person or what. It, it's what God puts on your. It's where you have peace. Yeah. If you if you have peace about going to you know your your son's little league game, my goodness, go to your he needs your Do it attention. Unto Do it unto the Lord. Unto the Lord, he needs your sure. attention, and that and that's a good thing. Be God conscious, you know. But maybe you're not supposed to go to the bar. Okay. Maybe you're not supposed to go to the discotheque on Friday night. Probably, and, and probably not. Maybe I'm going to say allow, the probabilities are less, less that, but he may have somebody he wants you to go Maybe. See. You make weigh sure you're it. you're not talking yourself into that. Yeah, doing what you want to do, yeah, right? Don't, don't you need to weigh what God is saying, you know, where you're to go. You're yeah. going to have to have a big, big light to go in places like diverse places yeah. like that. Yeah. Jesus went, but he had a, he, he shined a big light. He shined a big light and everything changed. And he, and he, he didn't behave like the people there. No, so, you know, yes, I believe people. People are called to those places, but like mm -hmm. you say, don't fake fake yourself don't out. Fake yourself. That's like I'm just doing. bringing a light yeah. to to yeah, the. Yeah, I'm just going to go bring a light yeah. to the strip joint over yeah, here. Yeah, to the. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that probably is not the case. That's probably not a good idea. And if you and if you do, if you are going to bring, you need to bring people with you where you can have some some uh, a team that. Uh, in order to have that support yeah. and that type of thing. Well, whatever God tells you to do. But the main thing is... I think you're making a very good point. We need to let the Holy Spirit develop us in the context of all mm -hmm. of these biblical realities. By the way, why would it be there if God didn't have a purpose for it? He said to honor it. So how why do I honor it, it God? There? God, tell me how to honor it. Show me what you want me to do with this. And it's an individual decision yeah. based on what he individually tells yeah. you. Yeah. And so, but you have to have peace about it. If you don't have mm -hmm. peace about it, then you're not walking in, in shalom. You're not right. walking in true Shabbat. That's right. That's right. Because so, the, the true Shabbat is the one on the inside of me. Yeah, it could be just studying all day long on the Shabbat. Could be. It could be. It could be. Or could it be could prayer. Be, could be prayer, or it could be just being with my family that I haven't been with all week long, and they wonder what Daddy's like anymore. Right. And, un and unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. N not as you want to do it, but as He wants you as to do it. As He wants me to do God, it. Just, just talk to Him and Absolutely. ask Him to guide you on Shabbat. Um, You've got to be in the Spirit. You've got yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the, the practice. That's okay, the practice. that's the rehearsal. That's right. Very good. Well, you've been listening to Covenant Walk, and we have had a great session today about Shabbat. We hope that you've enjoyed it. You can go to uh, victoriasarvati.com for more information, and uh, you can click on to the Bethany Radio and hear more podcasts uh, about some very, very good information and uh, subject matters people. that we've had and <laughs> lots of interesting people. But God bless you. Have a great Shabbat.